to oxidative phosphorylation. And conversely, oxidative phosphorylation is linked to electron transport. If I stop one, I stop both. If I start one, I start both. However, when I, when I have dinitrophenol present, electron transport is going like crazy. There's no ATP being made. Your body is trying to make up that deficit, and that's why all the citric acid cycle and all those other things are going on, is because the signal is, hey, there's plenty of NAD. This guy must be really exercising. That's what's going on. OK, does that make sense? Yes, Casey. You would just breathe heavily during the day and sweat more and do the same thing. It has nothing to do with night. I just use that as an example because people, yeah, yeah. It, I would probably be more worried about it at night because I would, I would not know I was dying when I was dying. How do you die? Well, for the same reason, okay, so w think back when I talked about uh, fluoro fluoroacetate. What did fluoroacetate do? Oh, yeah, he did talk about that. So fluoroacetate was used to kill coyotes. It combined with oxaloacetate to make fluorocitrate. And when it combined with fluorocitrate, it killed aconitase, so it killed the citric acid cycle. In that case, it stopped the citric acid cycle. In this case, you're starting it like crazy. But in both cases, you're not getting any ATPs. So if you run the citric acid cycle and you get no ATPs, you're dead. That's what kills you. That's what kills you. OK? So just like fluoroacetate would kill you for stopping the citric acid cycle, this kills you because it stops the citric acid cycle from making any ATP. Without ATP, you don't last very long. You're gone. Yeah, nasty stuff. OK. Now, let's think about respiratory inhibitors. OK? Blah. What is that? Not what I wanted. OK. Here's some respiratory inhibitors. What are respiratory inhibitors? OK. I don't like the word respiratory. OK. I think it's just respiratory means different things to different people. To me, respiratory means my lungs. It means my breathing. It means my, my um, oxygen usage, right? OK. They're talking about electron transport inhibitors. That's what they really mean. Electron transport inhibitors, okay, here are three of them. Okay. Amatal. Amatal is a compound that when it binds to complex one in the mitochondria, stops the movement of electrons through it. If I stop the movement of electrons through complex one, what's going to happen to the pumping of protons? When the pumping of protons goes down, what's going to happen to the proton gradient? What happens to the, the synthesis of ATP? You get the idea. Yeah, no sound effects necessary, right? All right, so if I stop complex one with this guy, I can actually kill something. Okay? Insects are fairly susceptible to this. And amatel um, is a, uh, I'm sorry, amatel and rotenone uh, are both things that inhibit complex one. Rotenone actually is a plant substance that inhibits complex one also. And inhibits it by, uh, the plants make it to kill insects. Insects are very susceptible to um, inhibiting complex one. We are susceptible as well, but not quite as susceptible as insects are. Well, how do we survive complex one being inhibited? Anybody know? Any ideas? Think about complex two, right? Complex two kind of bypasses that, so we actually have a little bit of way around there. I wouldn't recommend going out and swallowing, sprinkling rotenone on your, on your breakfast cereal, OK? But if you're an insect, it's really deadly to insects. All right. Antimycin A is a compound that inhibits complex 3. Antimycin A is more poisonous than rotenone. Now, at complex 3, do I have a way around it with complex 2? No, I don't. There are ways around complex three, but they're complicated and they're not real abundant. Okay? There are two important, there's actually three important inhibitors of complex four that are very, very poisonous. Okay? 
One is cyanide. Now, there's no way around complex four. If you block complex four, you're going to kill the organism, or at least kill the cell that, that gets that, that cyanide. Cyanide is one of those compo compounds. Okay? Azides, which are nitrogen-containing compounds, also inhibit complex four. And the last one is one that's a double whammy. Okay? Carbon monoxide knocks out complex four. Now, carbon monoxide gets you two ways. It gets you with hemoglobin by binding in oxygen's place, and it gets you with by binding to complex four. Both ways, you're dead. Yes? A Azide? Yeah. A-Z-I-D-E. Yes, Matt? Yes? Car so carbon monoxide, carbon dioxide, oxygen, and water all move across almost all biological membranes fairly readily. Yep. Okay. Now, if, let's, let's imagine what happened now if I took, let's say, cyanide and I treated some cells with it. Describe to me what's going to happen if we have an intact mitochondrial membrane. What's the first thing that's going to happen if I add cyanide? Electron transport is going to stop. What's the second thing that's going to happen? No. Second thing is not phosphorylation will stop. There's something that happens before that. No, not something that happens before that. You lose the gradient? No. That's, that's how, how you lose the um, synthesis of ATP. You're going to stop oxygen usage. Oxygen is the first thing that electrons are going to go to. If electrons stop, you stop oxygen usage. Bang. Okay? All right, so now I've stopped oxygen usage. I've stopped the movement of electrons. All right? If I stop the movement of electrons, essentially I'm going to stop the conversion of NADH to NAD. All right? What's going to happen to the proton gradient? It's going to be the next thing to go. Because there's nothing pumping protons out, what's there is going to be slowly dropping. And that's why ATP synthesis is going to slowly drop and eventually stop. Okay? But ATP synthesis is not the first thing that stops. It takes a, it takes a, little, a, a few seconds or a few minutes, actually, to stop ATP synthesis because there's enough gradient, there's enough charge in the battery to keep it going for a little while. Okay? What happens if I add DNP and I add cyanide? Besides drastically killing the cell, I'm really vicious today. Okay, what's going to happen there? Any thoughts? How would the electron get to complex four if complex one is inhibited? Well, so complex two is one way, and there, there are other mechanisms. So vitamin C can actually play a role in shuttling electrons. I haven't talked about it, but vitamin C actually can help uh, in this process. Vitamin C can actually work around complex three as well. So that's, but I, I haven't talked about that. No thoughts? No, I'll leave it for the exam there. Okay. You guys think I'm joking? There um, are some inhibitors. There's rotenonanamital. Okay. The spirits are with us. Uh, cyanide, azide, carbon monoxide down here. Um, there is complex uh, anamycin A, complex 3 right there. And we're set. Okay. Um, let's see. I think that's what I want to say about this. And. The last things I want to talk about are ways of getting electrons into the mitochondrial matrix. Remember I told you that NAD and NADH do not cross the inner mitochondrial membrane. Okay? NAD and NADH do not cross the inner mitochondrial membrane. Well, how do electrons from the, the uh, glycolysis make it in? Well, to get it in, 
cells have to use what's called a shuttle. A shuttle is something that carries electrons, but it's not NADH, it's not FADH2. Okay? Well, how does that work? Well, one type shuttle is called the glycerol, uh, sh the glycerol phosphate shuttle, and it works uh, like this. Okay? Here is um, dihydroxyacetone phosphate produced in glycolysis. And if I take, and there's an enzyme that uh, is called glycerol phosphate dehydrogenase, you don't need to know that. But if I take electrons from NADH and I add them to this, I create something called glycerol phosphate. There is a shuttle system to move glycerol phosphate into the mitochondrion. So glycerol phosphate is carrying those electrons in. When this guy gets into the, the um, mitochondrion, the reverse reaction occurs. Okay? Except for in the reverse reaction, FAD is converted to FADH2. Different process. You'll notice that FADH2 donates electrons through complex 2, right? NADH donates electrons through complex 1. What was the difference between the electrons coming in those two different complexes with respect to proton pumping? Which one did more proton pumping? By bringing, so NADH is going to, the electrons from NADH are going to result in more proton pumping as they go through complexes 1, three, and four. If electrons come in through FADH2, they go through three and four. There's approximately one ATP made for the pumping at each complex. So eight, there's three ATPs made essentially for things that come in through complex one. There's two ATPs made for electrons that come in through complex two because they only go through three and four. Now, this process happens in insect muscle. These guys, it, it works because it, it happens very fast. Insects can transfer these electrons into the mitochondrion very quickly. But they're starting with something that has an NADH, and they're making FADH2 on the inside. They're not doing this very efficiently. They're sacrificing speed for efficiency. I'm, I'm sorry, efficiency for speed. They can move these electrons very fast, but they're giving up an ATP every time they do this. It's one of the reasons insects are very susceptible to some of these processes that I'm talking about. They're not very efficient at moving those electrons into the mitochondrial matrix where they can be used by the electron transport system. Does that make sense? Okay. Now. We don't use the insect system. We use a, a more complicated system called the malate aspartate shuttle. No, we're not going to go over every step in the process. The advantage of the malate aspartate shuttle is that electrons starting out here as NADH make it into the mitochondrion also as NAD, NADH. You notice it says 2.5 ATPs. These are all approximate numbers. Three is a nice, easy round number to remember. Now, how does it work? Well, it's called the malate aspartate shuttle because basically malate is carrying the electrons in. Malate carries the electrons into the mitochondrion. Malate gets oxidized back to oxaloacetate, which gives NADH. So it starts as NADH, it ends up as NADH. No loss in efficiency. Then there's a whole bunch of gyrations to get it back to malate. Aspartic acid being one of those. We're not going to worry about the gyrations. The important thing is that malate is the carrier of the electrons in. This system is much more efficient. It's slower, but it's much more efficient. It allows the cell to not lose ATPs that are made out in the cytoplasm for getting them into the mitochondrial matrix. OK, that's the shuttle. And let's see. That's what I have to say there. So any questions on that?